Yeah, I think you sent one, one over and I was like, that can't be them hovering. I, I didn't even know you did that formation hovering. Oh, oh no, no. The, the picture I sent you. Now, now this, this is interesting because we practiced, obviously, a fair bit. And on this particular day, there were no airplanes or hardly any. We had two airplanes uh, and, and the boss said, look, I'll tell you what, I'll get one from the OCU. The deputy guy who's going to do this, let him lead it so we can try the leading bit. You've done a lot of them. Just sit there, and that was number two, and try and be as steady as you can. Mm. And we'll put the American exchange officer on the outside because he, he was the spare. Um, so, fine. So we'll get out onto the runway. Uh, oh, no, onto the grass, by the way. Yeah, this is yeah. all done all <laughs> on the grass. Um, so we get out onto the grass, and it's, it's the same old business. You know, you nod for the power, but in the Harrier, you also nod for the, the, uh, the nozzle down. So, and that is about two milliseconds apart, because in the Harrier, and I'm sure it's the same now, you always slammed the engine. You never went gently up, you always slammed it. Oh. And it went from 20, 55% to 100% in two seconds. Wow. It was really quick. Um, and, uh, and the reason for that was, you, it was mostly to get into this habit so that if you were going slowly, like a, a rolling vertical takeoff or something, and you didn't slam it, you could easily get ingestion in the engine. Right. And, and then the engine would bang and then you're, you're in trouble. Uh, so it was always slammed. So I'm sitting there, good old Louis out here. That's it. Right, one, two, three, go. <sighs> bang, Choom. pull the nozzle back, ah, oh, took off. Oh, look at that, hey. Eh? And the next thing that happened, my, I'm, I'm looking over here and my aircraft just goes, Oh, oh Christ. shit! I didn't know what happened. I had no idea, and I went to eject, and probably, and there was Louis's aeroplane just there. <laughs> I thought, oh God, no! Um, and then it, it it went right over, and then hit the ground. The outrigger hit the ground with a hell of a bang, and the aircraft sort of, it sort of. I think the outrigger must have done that, and then flicked the aircraft up. Yeah. And so I went, and I thought, that was the one moment in my life where I actually. I knew I was dead. I really? knew it. I just thought, well, you've had it, mate. And uh, I was just waiting for the instrument panel to go, come. And the aircraft did go over, but it then went on to the other outrigger and then stabilised itself. So I'm now about 40 degrees off the original heading. And I think, oh, I might make it. So I <laughs> slam the bloody power off, um, pu push the nozzles forward, and um, I just held it on the ground for as best I could to get some speed or something and then yank the thing into the air and in the OCU there was at uh, Wittering and it was in a dip like this which was just as well because if it had been up I'd have hit it wow. uh, but as it was um, I went over the, um, the taxiway with another bloody great bang and uh, got airborne and I just remember seeing all these startled faces just down here as I went <laughs> across this OCU building. anyway uh, so I called up uh, the deputy leader, good old Porky, and I said, uh, and he didn't know. <laughs> he said, what? what? I said, look, I've had a problem on takeoff, and I think I've written my undercarriage off. Would you, would you mind coming and telling me what's, what's left? Um, he said, hmm, looks good to me. He said, your right outrigger, I think it was, the tyres burst, but apart from that, it seems fine. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway, I, I got rid of all the fuel and came back, vertical landing, no sweat. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's incredible. But, uh... I did a wheels up in a Harrier. Right. Um, and that, what happened was I came off an air test, this was on three squadron, and um, put the gear down, wouldn't come down. So, oh, all right, I'll have a little bit of faffing about, see if I can get it, a bit of yawing and things, see if I can get it down. I couldn't get it down, so I thought, all right, that's all right, I've got the, you know, the emergency system, which, you know, oh. Nothing. You sure? Nothing. Um, and so I uh, eventually, I, I sort of got myself down on fuel. I flew past the tower and I said, is anything out? I, I've got no lights or anything. And they said, yes, the one thing that's out is the speed brake. And, and so I now had the speed brake out and no wheels. So in the end, what happened was the guy in the tower said, tell you what, fly by again, hover in front of the tower. I'll get a ruler out and I'll put it from your gun pod to the brake, and that will give you this, the proper yeah. landing thing, which he did. He landed absolutely fine. 
The only thing that happened with that was that um, when I, I thought, right, I'll get out now, um, because it, it landed and it was fine, but it was doing a lot of creaking and hissing and oh. that sort of, oh, is this thing going to catch fire? So I was fairly keen to get out. And uh, anyway, so I did that and I went to pull the hood. Hood jammed. Oh, Christ. And what it was, was the hood was linked to a step. And of course, we're now on the ground. So when you pull the hood back, the step, instead of going like that all the way down, to, so you can get in the aeroplane, it just went down about that far. <laughs> so I couldn't open the canopy. <laughs> oh, God. So I did what all I could do, and that was to explode the canopy, because it's got a detonating yeah. cord all the way around. Uh, that was quite an implosion. I can imagine. Because <laughs> when you're inside a bang like that, I was quite shaken. And. Um, then, uh, in the back of my neck, which I still got it, it's all this molten lead. Oh, really? From the detonating core. Wow. And because I was like this, I was trying to hunker down, and it's still all in, my, in the back of my neck. <laughs> wow.